Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Bruce with DIY Homestead Projects. You're looking at my Harbor Freight 90 amp flux core welder. And this is the Harbor Freight flux core welder mods series. I've got my capacitors in there and all wired up. Now this is a good time to mention about these capacitors they're large capacitors and when they're in series like this they're very very powerful so if you're doing this be real careful I'm not the capacitor expert but I do know that once they're charged up they're ready and willing to immediately discharge for whatever touches these two terminals it'll zap the heck out of you so be real careful now the way I've got them wired up at the moment they're relatively safe because this gold piece right here is a 470 micro or 470 ohm resistor that's wired to the two leads on this small capacitor which actually they're all joined together but it will discharge the capacitors over a period of time now I don't know exactly what is the appropriate resistor to use I've seen videos of people using all different sizes. I suppose it depends on how quickly how quickly you want them to discharge. I don't want mine to discharge immediately, but I wanted them to discharge within a minute anyway. Now there's people out there that know a lot more about those resistors and the sizes and what to use. <clears throat> but I did charge them up and try to discharge. And I know that it will take several seconds if not 10 to 15 for them to completely discharge bottom line is if you're using these capacitors make sure you're you're just being careful i don't know exactly what it'll do to you but it won't be good and it won't feel good i know that much so anyway there's your warning don't say i didn't tell you <laughs> so i've got those all installed i've got my resistor installed it's all wired together. Now I need to make a battery cable so that I can fire it up and test it out. I just bought this. It just came today. I've been waiting for it to come in so I could finish making this. This is six gauge. Supposedly it is good for 150 amps over a hundred feet. I bought 30 feet. I'm going to make two cables, two 15 foot cables, one ground cable and one stinger cable for that uh, Chinese 200 amp stick welder that I purchased. And I'm going to use the ground cable for both this uh, Harbor Freight 90 amp flux core welder and for the uh, stick welder as well. So I'm going to cut this in half and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to put the cable together with these, I don't know if the correct terminology is mini DINs connectors, but to me that's what they are. And these are Chinese knockoff brand. These ends actually came with the stick welder that I purchased that I'm going to do a review on here soon. Um, and then I purchased the female end that I put on this welder from China. It took me more than a month to get the darn thing. So if you're in a hurry, then maybe that's not the place to buy them. You can get them off of Amazon as well. I'll put a link in the description of these uh, Harbor Freight Flux Core mod videos for all of the parts that I'm using, except for the, uh, the wire. I'll just show you the label. I bought it at uh, wiresupply.com, wireandsupply.com offline. I paid about uh, 90 cents per foot. That's the cheapest that I was able to find. Maybe you can get a better deal than that. I don't know. And then I had to pay some shipping as well. But they did get it to me quick. It only took them two days and it came via FedEx. 
but it looks to be good wire. This is the cheaper stuff they had, the EPDM coating, but it's nice and flexible, multi-strand wire, pure copper, and I bought six gauge because that's the biggest that I could fit into these ends from uh, the best of my calculations. It's probably overkill. It's much thicker than the original ground cable, but like I said, I'm going to use it multi-purpose for this welder and for that uh, 200 amp stick welder. So let me get this set up and I'll show you how I'm going to put these ends on here. I just cut this piece in half. They ship one solid one solid length, so if you want separate pieces, you'll have to cut it yourself. I just used a pair of these. Not the most ideal, but it's what I had, and it worked. Again, this is 4 gauge. I can't remember what I said earlier, but it's actually it's 4 gauge. I think I said 6, but it's 4. And they were extremely accurate with their measurement. They basically sent me maybe 30 feet and 1 or 2 inches. So I've got two 15 foot pieces, which again is overkill, but this way I can pretty much weld anywhere in my shop with my welder set in one spot. So that's how I came up with that number. And I shouldn't incur any losses over that distance, over 15 feet. I guess maybe you, uh, may, maybe you double that, I don't know, 30 feet, anyway should be more than sufficient so this little connector has a set screw and it comes mine came with an allen wrench for this set screw and then inside here if I can get it out of there it has a little bit of, it has a little sleeve and yeah, let me find something to stick in there and pull that sleeve out there we go a copper sleeve that's going to go over the end of the wire and then stuff it in there and tighten the set screw so I'm going to just use this sleeve as a gauge to peel this back looks to be about a half inch and uh, try not to cut any of these pieces of wire, the multi strands that are in there. This probably does not have to be exact, but I'm going to try to do it as tidily, as neatly as I can. Pretty tough stuff I will say that all right okay and I'll put this copper sleeve over the end of that Make sure I don't have any stray wires. Then that'll fit up inside. Make sure it's pressed in there as far as I can get it. Then I'll put this set screw in. As I'm holding it all up yeah don't forget to put your end on first in this case I'll slide it in from the other side but that needs to go on first otherwise you won't you'll have to take it have to take it apart again to get that in there crimp this down pretty tight That should be sufficient. It's pretty darn tight. And then this has a little nub on the end there. 
So as you push it in, you turn it a quarter turn or so and it locks in. All right, so let me put the, uh, let's see, this goes on there like that. Yeah, I did this the hard way. Oh well, live and learn, I guess. First, first cable like this that I've ever put together, so. So then you'll end up with that, and then this pulls down in there. Like that. Okay, so there you have an end. That end's going to connect to the welder. And then via basically the same method, I'm going to put this clamp on. Again, this is probably overkill. This is a Berger 400 amp ground clamp, copper alloy, heavy duty. And uh, I was going to get a little bit smaller one, but this is all they had when I went into the store. So this is what we'll go with. But you can see up in there, it's got a big set bolt. This clamps around the cord as it comes in. And then down inside there, there's a, about a half piece of a sleeve. So I'm going to do the same thing and connect this to the other side and then we'll be ready to plug it into the welder. And there's what it looks like when it's done. Now I can tell that this this ground clamp is made for much much larger cable than what I'm using with it. So it's definitely overkill. But I did get it securely clamped in there and then I don't know if you can see it or not but I had to run this this keeper around the wire and through this little gap two times in order to clamp the wire because the wire is so small so anyway it's in there and it's tight and secure and I shouldn't have to worry about that for a long time so now I've got a nice four gauge 15 foot ground clamp I can use with this welder so this should just push in and turn there you go so I can remove that ground clamp use it on another machine use it on this one and it's way 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 better than what used to be on there so we'll see